Hey, what's going on everyone? This is your Shirley back from the video and today we're going to be doing some Countess offlane. I feel like it's the perfect opportunity to do so because it's a new skin on her and it's actually pretty dang cool. The Shogun Counter skin is actually something that looks really dang cool on her. Definitely the more unique skin we have not gotten in a while because most of our other skins were just like color variants of the base model. But anyway, today's build is going to be the similar build I went last time except we're going to change it up. We're going to go Tempest and go Worldbreaker 3rd. Because I kind of found that Countess in particular, like she doesn't need many cards. Them like kind of like the Shimmy kind of situation. They just need raw stats. So I almost feel like many cards them is sort of like a trap on her. I feel like so we don't actually want many cards them third, which I tried to do last time. We actually want to go more like Warbreaker third because we want to build that wall magical power early on. And plus that health and tenacity is quite quite nice and being able to like um, do out people a bit better so we're not like a squishy assassin we're actually a durable assassin with a lot of HP and life steal. That's kind of like the next reason we're doing Tempest. Tempest is a very good power spike I would say and will allow us um, to... what's the word? It will allow us to just be able to like take early fights early on because Soul Bear is fine, it's great for movement speed and that shield is super good as well but I do find the whole like um, Soul Bear is not a great like damage item. It's more like the survivability option. And I kind of feel like if we want to fight people early on, especially like the really aggressive Sarah's offlane, we need to like build, um, what's the word? We need to get Tempest so we can actually do them out in the 1v1. Like Tempest, I think people sometimes forget how deadly Tempest is in the 1v1, especially early on right here. I actually don't think my all attack on B will kill him on that rotation, but mm, we have like no mana, it's like the issue right here. So we may actually have to take an early reset. See, um, when page missed, we're actually good to um, push out one more wave right here. And I'm gonna try to get um, heal buff. Normally, it's not like a great thing to do early on, especially with counters. But like, I figure I need to get a little bit more gold to get Alchemist Ward before I reset. So let's take Heal Buff. I have plenty of priority to get it. Gives me a little bit more mana so I can push out one more wave um, with this extra mana right here. Oh, he's gonna last it too. Like, I tried drag it too and it's still... That is actually so dang annoying right there. I'm actually in a really bad spot now. That is... Super super annoying. I really thought I have enough time to grab it too. So we unfortunately the yoink is just real right there. So now I'm in a pretty bad spot. The wave is pushed up at this point, so I'm just gonna stick around to get my um alchemy rod. Like I'm just gonna let this push in. We try our best to farm this under tower and then we take the reset. Pretty annoying, but sometimes you're just really unlucky when it's really just one basic attack to finish off the buff right there. Okay, we got enough gold. Like, we just can't last it really under this wave, so we're just gonna take the reset and try to see if we can make it back fast enough to try to grab whatever wave is left over. Because I'm pretty confident we will outscale the Sarahs, especially once we get like our Archimate Wars fully stacked up, once we get like Tempest. Like, I've played this in the previous game and we actually cooked the Sarahs really well. Like, we just have to get to that point and play patient, is all it is right here. Because the hardest part of countless offlane is always the early game part where you have very limited mana, your favorite weak, especially against a really aggressive offlaner. You just have to be patient. Play for the scaling game that you will definitely win if you play for that win condition. It's actually gonna hit me, hold on to it right there. But he's still hitting my wave, so he can't disrespect it too much, especially since we have the lifesteal. 
Like, now we're not actually a good spot, except we're getting ganked now on this rampage right here. I really wish the crunch actually stay on top of that, because I think we killed the Saber at the very least. So I really need to get some kind of kill pressure going on if I want to try to survive this laning phase a bit more, because he has level 6, I have to actually be very careful now. So you could just force it all in, and I have, don't have a way to get out. There we go, ladies and gents. That's what I'm talking about, my good sir. Love the gravity help right there. That's the only reason why I stepped up because my crunch was still around. So I figured we can just bait this for the team right there. So we love it. We love the good stuff. So we can do one more wave. Um, that's why he's sticking around because I need help pushing this in all the way, which is actually a okay. Ah, uh, I didn't. I hit that too early. As A-OK, -okay, we're in a really, really good spot now. Love to see you guys. Because now we're going to try to see what we can get online with Orbit Bros. I imagine it's going to take a couple more backs until we actually get this fully online though. So we have to wait and see right here. Because my priority right now is like, if you're doing this double stacking build, especially on Countess Outplane, you want to be as selfish as you can with farming and making sure you stay relevant in the landing phase. Very, very important that you keep farming because you need to get these iron stacked. And once you do get these irons, you have to make sure you actually stack them as fast as you can before until you can get the full power unlocked right there. So it's like he's going for a more assassin build, which is actually good because we're going a little bit more bulky build than I think he realized at the moment. And we can definitely play around that fact. Because he's gonna try to bust us down, we're actually building quite a lot of HP, so we're actually good um, to keep on, like, we can take, I think, enough burst damage that we don't merely die, and we have enough damage on all our end to kill him because he's going, like, Assassin's Davis, which we can definitely blow right through with all the raw magical power we're building right here. Nice, we we'll dodge both of them, like a Chad, love to see it. That's another big thing about playing the counts offlane is you want to try and dodge this stuff like the Sailor's Q, the Sailor's Ombi, those are the abilities I need to dodge so I can waste his mana and make sure I stay very healthy in lane. Because I have I'm getting to the point where I have enough mana to where I can actually Oh, next ability rotation, he's gonna die right there. We have enough damage to just kill him essentially in the next rotation. Not in range. So we're gonna get the blink out of him, but we are definitely showing him what is up with the countless offlane tech. Am I still not in range? I guess I'm not. Is he? I'm trying to figure out if he's trying to bait me or not, which he may be. So I have to be a little careful. Okay. I think he's not baiting because it doesn't seem like um, no one's coming over if he's trying to stay outside my Q range like that. Tower is under attack. Yeah, you're not gonna hold the wave like that for free. Definitely not gonna hold the wave for free. Okay, we have our Q, so he actually just wastes his ultimate. He's like really 1 HP. I think I'll stop the back with my E, because, yeah, he's, try he's trying to wait for something, right? Nice. Got the solar kill essentially right there, love to see it. It's actually really cool too, because I think, uh, as much as I, I keep saying that Kalan's early game is really weak, especially against this really aggressive, like, laner, it's really not that bad. Like, if you launch your max on B and go for this more like scaling build, I can't help that. I have literally no mana, it's the issue. If I mana, I'm definitely down the game, but I have no mana, that's why I'm trying to tell him to back off because I just can't help him with that. Accounts with no mana is just 
not a hero's access essentially, so you just have to like really build a lot of mana so you never run into that issue at all. I'm gonna grab one more wave because I'm actually just 100 go, go off of my overgrowth. Nice. Halfway through our Ackman Ward, slightly off from Tempest, but we can't undoubtedly too long and let's actually start building that overgrowth ASAP. Because if we can get our overgrowth started before like 10 minutes, that's the most ideal. I'm slightly late on that because I got denied a lot of CS early on, but it's actually not too bad considering that we're building Ackman Ward along with it. It's actually going Dread, which, like, that shield, I think, pops as soon as we do a magical damage instance on them. So, that's actually gonna be really easy just to pop that shield on him and, like, make sure that he doesn't have that when we're trying to do the burst damage on top of him. I might actually try to do triple. He was doing the triple right here. Nice, he got the last hit right there. Nice. Very good cleanup by the team. Very good like gank by the crunch especially. That's actually really massive for me. Because the fact that I'm getting kills this early on while doing a stacking build is just really really massive win for me. Yeah, okay, I should be good to push off this one wave right here. I doubt he's gonna try all in right here. So it's actually back because uh, we're staying on Tempest. Again, Tempest is a huge power spike, so if we get that online and get more and more items online along with it, we can actually just fight this Zero's all in 100 zero right here. I'm not even kidding, like Tempest power spike is super strong and that's why if you can run it, a lot of people will run it on like counters, on Shinbi, on any magical jungles especially. I see the tail is back right there, so we are gonna just take the two buff really quick and then we can keep on farming away. But until I get everything fully stacked up, I'm kinda inclined not to uh, roam just so I can make sure I hit my power spike so I make my impact um, the strongest it can be in those games. The feast is prepared. Yeah, we can go on mini prime. He's making the call, let's definitely help him with that. I guess the question is, is he giving it to me? I think he tried to give it to me, but the tick bone will still go to him. But that's fine, I think it's a little bit better to go on him still at the end of the day. Actually, I'm gonna roam on this. I said I wasn't gonna roam, but with how things are looking over there, I might roam for the sake of just grabbing river buff, grabbing mid, all that good stuff, right? So I might just hover this a little bit and see what happens. Because I'm fine with giving up my T1 left side tower, that means we get a T2 mid potentially. Uh, I'm gonna go back to left. I think the face rotating right here. So I'm gonna at least try to like catch the left wave. Maybe sit. Yeah, because you see Rampage over there. That's why I was kind of like, maybe I should actually back up because it might actually run towards me. Which luckily I did. Um, he's pushing left. 
I'm gonna look for the all in. I think we definitely win this fight here. Yeah, he's definitely scared. That's why he merely back off right there. I think the... What you call it? Rampage might be on my side, but the series is low, so I can keep the pressure on for a bit longer before I take the reset. Yeah, that's why I kind of figured what's gonna happen. Under siege. Okay, it seems it seems like they don't want to actually go on this just yet, at least. So. Stop the back right there. Yes, I do. Cause I I see him just stop at the wall, so I throw the ease, waste the time a bit more, and give my team more time to do the rotation or whatever like invading doing on that right side. I'm gonna tell them I'm attacking left. Maybe I don't need them, but I want them to cover me just in case I uh, people got looking at me right away. I'm gonna go to grab two buff. I am actually have enough to get World Breaker right here. So things, this is where things start to get a lot more spicier. We could, I'm actually a little bit late on the overgrowth, so it's quite not 100% right there. Someone's right there. I need to try to follow up if I can. Because I just have the mana was the big issue. Now I sold it to, but Twin Page is leaving already, so... Take the resets. It's just so hard to fight if I have no mana. So grab that. Um, now let's start to build into Life Binder. Life Binder is going to be the item that provides that build to haste um, right there. Because we kind of lack that build to haste right here. We have all the magical power 254 ready, but no ability haste. But that's where Life Binder comes in. More HP feeds into more magical power. All that really great stuff just combines so, so well together. Now it's like the one shot race because we are. Having a lot of magical power under our belt right here. Gonna go mid, because I think we want to try to grab that wave to try to farm because our Iggy is dead for another 15. Mm, the wave wasn't there, I think we could take it. Let's ult him so she doesn't have a chance to blink. Now we go on the um, Victor. Very nice stuff. That should be a faint tooth and a half. Love to see it. And we finally got the old Ponder right there. So now we're gonna get the true power spike online right here. Just a sec. But my page might be jumping in by the way, so I have to be a little bit careful of that fact. Try to push this down for my gravity. He doesn't. He never loses those. Love to see it. Nice, awesome work, team. Okay, take the reset. Um, get our old partner all the way. Get wherever we can on life final. We are just honestly just now gaming super hard. Like we should now really just look for kills whenever we can because of how strong we are. Over 322 uh, magical power, we gain the ability haste from overgrowth. Um, but what we really need is the ability haste, which we will get as soon as this iron finishes right here. Because we get over 600 magical power and over like 80 magical um, ability haste, I think. So, like I said, this build is just disgusting for this wall stats. And I think this is one of the best way to play counts, honestly. The feast is prepared. I think left is too shoved up at the moment, so I'm gonna opt to try to see if I can gain any information in the jungle, like maybe taking the 5 camp really quickly. 
Yeah, he's definitely not happy Campo after we um, took everything from him. Nice, we got the pick right there and we're definitely going to shove this and no one else can really stop us unless like more people come over to our left lane. So I'm going to be on my way left. Gravity is kind of hovering me still so we have some backup if things um, turn for the worse. Okay, phase right there so we don't push anymore. Grab up a tier buff and honestly we can keep on farming until like life finder is my goal at least. Very good stuff. I think I'm gonna go to mid because if I want to rotate to right side, I can do that while farming the midway super quick. So let's see. I think Faye's rotating over there. Okay, I'm gonna come over all the way because it seems like the big fight happening and I don't want my team to die if I'm not around to help. Mm, let me actually see if we can get the drop onto this rampage. Get the blink out, very good. Nice. Very good stuff. Maybe we can do prime honestly. Oh wait, trying to go for the fade because she has no blink. Oh wow, no ultimate to stop the crunch from diving like that. Mm. Maybe we can't do any more if our ADC is dead, but I'm right, gonna do one more wave. People are still kind of like pushing right and left. Let's just try to get some damage down on this inhibitor. Okay, it's not gonna be enough to take this tower, so I'm just gonna back off right here. But I am gonna grab the blue buff, and if Grim is still around, I think I might kill him. Four levels up, I'm definitely gaming right here. I know I made the call for fine, but I'm kind of being the selfish coward that I am, taking all blue side jungle right there. So now on my way left, maybe I can actually become a spy, walk to Rampage so we know where he's going at all times. So let me actually just keep an eye on the team, get the Victor ultimate out for free. Mid dogs the hook, love to see it. I'm gonna help my team DPS this because I don't think they have enough this early in the game, so we definitely need to. Oh, actually, they do have the Iggy, so it actually worked out very, very well for them. Let's reset. Um, I want to grab my life binder just because I that's a huge power spike I'm missing out on. But I might be late to the next faint too, is the issue. So, almost 400, but you see what I mean, that 90 build to haste. We have blue buff, but that's still, we have so much build to haste because life binder just goes super hard on this like build right here. So, that means that our armies on 3 second cooldown, Q5, this is what I mean, high build to haste, high magical power, a lot of HP makes it for a build where we are just spamming abilities and it's so hard for them to kill us. Oh, on my way. Alright, so we can get onto this fade right here, which we should. Nice stuff. Now it's actually pushing mid. That should be inhibitor mid, because only the person that is pushing left is the Sailor's, and he's very bad defending stuff by himself.
Let's just see how much damage we do. He has dread, um, that item, so it might be a little bit hard to bust down him a little bit, but a decent chunk, all things considered. Nice, we got the kill on him. Maybe actually be GG's right here. It's only the Victor and Grim coming up. As long as we dodge the first, we should be fine. And yeah, that is the GG's right there. Actually, I saw our KDA and we actually somehow went flawless on Countess Offlane with the double stacking world breaker tech right there, ladies and gents. Because like, I, I'm really surprised about that specifically because you're almost kind of expecting to die a couple of times early to mid game just because of how hard it is to kind of sustain, but like... All these consider, like the, all the CC against a really aggressive Sarah's offlane, we actually held our own pretty dang good right there. I'm actually really happy with how this actually turned out right here. Most damage in team, most damage the entire game right there of 26 minutes. So if this game went on longer, this could easily just start racking up some crazy damage because we only started to get our four items online towards the mid to late game right there. So. What a great stuff. And the damage here, yeah, that's what I mean. The damage here is so dang good on counters with the RMB max, with the ultimate, with the tempest, with the life binders. So we actually did some really good healing. We have some really great ability and a lot of damage to boot right there. So I actually think this is probably the best way to play counters offlane especially. Probably you can actually do the same thing in mid too because honestly, like as much as I love to like go like mid cards and wait like against the full like magical base build. Like the thing is, even that build is not that much different in terms of magical power. Like the build that I showcased to you guys right here, I think actually out gets you a lot more magical power than the traditional builds. You have more wall magical power overall. You have so much more build to haste and health and all this like damage thing like just stacking up. Like I actually think that it's probably one of the better ways to play counts at the moment in mid and off flame. Jungle, I think it's a little bit different um, story right there, but I really like this build a whole ton. And it seems like a lot of other people are at the moment because I also see uh, often it's like Lawbird wearing this um, similar build after he, he seen my take on this. So it's like a build that a lot of offlaners especially are starting to really join her. And I think this is the build that really puts Kalos more back into the offlane meta right here. Will we see it encompassing? Maybe not, but in the terms of like solo queuing, like just having fun and playing viable picks, I think this pick is actually really dang good right now. So, hope you guys enjoyed today's video. Let me down in the comments about the heroes, about the build show me showcase. Thank you as always for the amazing support and I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.